Hair Punching Tips. Today we're going to show how to punch hair into a silicone head. Now the first thing we'll need to do is build a hair punching tool. Now to make a classic hair punching tool, you need an X-Acto handle with a cross head like that uh, that opens uh, in two directions. And you need a small needle. Uh, these are little needles you can pick up at any sewing store or any craft store, but the smaller the better. Uh, it's a good idea to make different size hair punching tools for, for different amounts of hair that you want to punch. Once you've removed the uh, X-Acto blade, you want to put the needle right there in the tip and tighten it down. And one of the reasons I like to use this versus just embedding the needle in a dowel rod is that allows you to change out that needle when you break it. And you will break a few needles doing this. So once you've got that embedded, you're ready to grind that off at an angle. And for that, you need either a Dremel tool or a bench grinder. Now, when you're working with a bench grinder like this, it's important to know the direction that the grinder is traveling and make sure that you put your needle into that grinder in a direction so that the point doesn't grab on the sander and yank the tool out of your hand. And what we're doing is, uh, you see the enlarged animated version of the needle I've got there at the bottom of the screen. We're basically grinding down the needle, the eye of the needle, so that we wind up with a hook shape and a sharpened hook shape that will allow us to grab a single human hair and embed that into the silicone. Now it just takes a little bit of grinding to do that and here's the finished tool. And you can see that in close up there. It's just a, a tiny little hook arrangement that you wind up with. Now the size of the eye of the needle is what will determine how many hairs you grab with a particular tool. So it's a good idea to have several different size needles cut like this so you can grab different uh, amounts of hair depending on what part of the head you're working on. Now we're going to use two types of hair. Uh, I use crepe hair. Uh, most costume shops carry crepe hair. And then I'm going to use some human hair from a beauty supply shop. And human hair is uh, fairly cheap. It's usually priced depending on the length. Typically, uh, the longer the hair, the more expensive. And it gets drastically expensive when you start getting up into 14 and 18 inch hair lengths. Here we're using about six to eight inch length hair. And it comes on this uh, uh, all threaded together like this. And to use it for hair punching, I unravel that and uh, cut off little bits as I need in these little chunks of hair and I use that for my hair punching. Now with just a, a regular classic needle, typically the way you punch is to take that little clump of hair and wrap that around your index finger on your left hand. And then that allows you to take your right hand, if you're assuming you're right-handed, and pluck those hairs off one at a time using your punch needle. Now that'll make a little more sense here in a minute when you see that in action on the silicone head. Now another method we use is handling hair using silicone sealant. This is an aquarium sealant that is pure silicone and it's a great way to apply hair uh, like you would with spirit gum when you're handling uh, crepe beards. Now the other type of needle we're going to use is a punch needle from Lars Carlson at MakeupEffects.com. Uh, we get these from Sweden and they're available on our web store and they come in a variety package here. Um, each one has little fine notches that allow it to grab single hairs or multiple hairs and has a little angled tip that'll help you anchor that in a handle if need be. Now we're going to start on our head by hand laying hair using the silicone sealant. And this is a good method if you're putting a lot of hair on something and you have areas that are not going to be seen as well as others and you just need to build up a large mass of hair. Um, this works a lot like laying shingles. You start from the bottom up and what I typically do is lay down a little bead of a ribbon of uh, silicone sealant and then use a dental spatula to work that hair in. And keep in mind here, uh, we're for the sake of this video, we're just going to move along pretty fast. But obviously, the, uh, the more precise you get with that silicone, the better the results. And you can get your just a very minimal amount. If you're very careful, uh, you can use a very small amount of that silicone uh, to stick your hair down, and it goes a very long way. And if you're also, if you're really careful with this method, you can also use it to hand lay uh, eyebrows and some of the finer facial hair. 
Now to expand on the shingle analogy, the more shingles the better. So the more layers of hair, the more volume of hair you'll get using this particular method. In the interest of time, I'm moving pretty fast here, but just layering that up uh, one little bit at a time in uh, layering that about a quarter inch apart gets you a really nice volume of hair. Now when I'm doing a human head like this, I don't go too much farther past this point when I'm laying hair and attaching it like this uh, using silicone sealant. Now depending on the, the person's hairstyle, sometimes you can uh, continue past that point, but uh, in this case uh, we're going to switch to punching at this point and go with just our classic punch needle and just traditional hair punching methods. And here again, this is a good chance to see the way that's grabbed off of that little clump of hair and punched in. Now, when you're at the back of the head, you just need to build up a good volume of hair like we were doing laying the hair into an adhesive. Uh, but here, as we're punching it, we can punch multiple hairs at a time, or what's typically called uh, Barbie doll hair in a negative sense, uh, putting those, uh, those big clumps in, which you want those when you're building volume. You don't want Barbie doll hair right up on the hairline. So it's important to build that up in the volume that you need it towards the, the back of the head, and then as you get closer to the hairline, you want to thin that out a little bit and try to get as close to a single hair at a time as possible to get as realistic of a hairline as possible. Now at this point it's a good time to, to mention that the direction you point the uh, needle uh, when you're punching will determine the way the hair sticks out once it's punched. So if you, uh, if you just punch the hair straight in, you're going to wind up with hair sticking straight up. So it's real important in areas like eyebrows or uh, areas on the hairline uh, where you want the hair to lay back against the scalp. So keep that in mind as you're punching that direction is super important. It's also a good idea when you're starting out to have a practice head or an extra piece of gel tin skin material to punch hair into because you can always pull it out when you're practicing and punch it again. That's the beauty of hair punching. Uh, now we're going to trim up our eyebrows a little bit and move along. And the next method we're going to show for punching is using one of Lars uh, punch needles. And the nice thing about Lars uh, punch needles is it allows you to move really fast. Now it's not as accurate as a, a more classic needle where you can grab a single hair, but you will, uh, if by fanning out that hair and punching really fast, you can get a lot of hairs punched in an area in a very short amount of time. And it is still pretty accurate, but I, I still prefer a classic needle for doing eyelashes and eyebrows and that sort of thing. Now, you'll notice I'm switching back to the traditional needle here. I go back and forth, and I'm working on a hairline, and to do the beard here, uh, I go back and forth between those two types of needles, both a, uh, a Lars uh, needle and one of these classic needles here. And the reason is you can do, accomplish different tasks with each needle. Um, I typically use the classic needle for eyelashes. It's just a lot easier to aim it in one specific point. And then areas like when I'm building up uh, my beard area or uh, working on the hairline, that's when I use those uh, Lars punch needles where I can uh, apply a lot more hair a lot faster. Now keep in mind that hair punching is very time consuming. And even though this head took me uh, probably about eight hours of work to get it to this point, I would still consider this head uh, suitable for maybe an exploding head or something like that, but I wouldn't do this kind of hair work on something that was going to be uh, subjected to a lot of scrutiny. So keep in mind that hair punching is as good as the work and the time you're willing to put into it. So uh, for more in information on hair punching, I would check out Lars Carlson's Introduction to Hair Punching video. The link is there on the screen. And then also you might want to check out the video where we made one of our silicone heads. You can also click this link if you want to check out our, the video process of how we made the gel tin head we're working on here. And as always, the Platsil gel tin that we made the head from, as well as Gel Zero Zero and the hair punching needles are available at our website at brickintheyard.com.